In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing with the third paragraph, I think it's the third paragraph, of uh, volume 34, 12, 29, 1935. Now, Jesus just talks about being stripped of what is human, acquiring the union with the unity of the divine. Uh, and so Jesus says to Louisa, now the creature holds her royal place. See, that's what's coming to all of us. That's the thing that's going to, that's so exciting. We're going to um, hold our royal place. We're going to be, when the new Jerusalem comes, Jesus says, we're going to be clothed in royalty. In this human skin, basically, uh, where, where, where the divine will reigning within us, the human skin, if you want to say this veil of the divine will that we're supposed to be and our nothingness, is going to be clothed in divinity. That's why when you wear your scapular, the scapular is a sign saying, Our Lady said, this is the clothing of heaven. This is the royal garment that we're all going to be clothed in because our, our father is the king. Our father is the king. Now, when the creature holds her royal place, her act in the unity of our single act, okay, this is when you pray your morning prayer, you always get to the point of, of fusing yourself with the Holy Trinity, fusing yourself with Jesus, Mary, and Louisa to begin to live in the divine will, to, to pray your rounds of creation, rounds of redemption, to enter into the single act of God, that prime act of God. So that uh, basically in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future, uh, we enter into this life uh, that is no longer of earth, but of heaven on earth. It's that the fallen earth where, where the evil one is in charge. So the creature holds her royal place and her, her act in the unity of the God's single act, God's prime act. And therefore, if she loves, she loves in our divine unity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not human love. It's that fickle love. Therefore, if she loves, she loves in our unity. If she adores, and see, so you have to love. This is what the divine will is. And as, as little children of the holy divine will, you have to adore. You have to learn how, to, how Jesus adored the Father. You have to, how Jesus, when his prayer, how he adored. It's not the human it's the way Jesus did it. When she adores, when she blesses, so we're to bless, we're not to curse, we're to give blessings. That, that's the other thing too. Positive. You have to become positive in everything that you think, say, and do. No more negativity. No more ne negativity. It's, it's when you write, try not to use uh, don't. <laughs> you know, it should be, and said, I don't know this. It should be, you know, the Lord is expecting us to in something. It's just the opposite of the negative. When you are positive, it brings about positive, positive growth. I mean, we see that with water. If you curse, uh, uh, um, yell, scream at water, it, it's, it's, it's corrupted. It's, it's deformed. When you, this is a, this is a scientific fact. When you say to, you got two cups of water, one cup you keep in one room and you just say, I hate you. Another, this is, this has been done. Another cup in another room and you say, I love you. This water becomes sweet. This water becomes sour. How are you, how are you speaking? You know, how are you treating people? What, is it negative? Is it worry? Are you worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, negative? Are you doubting? That doesn't help anybody. I mean, just, just think about the plants that they've, they've, they've done this with plants, you know, not just water, but with plants. You, you, 
the royal place that God is calling us to, the unity of the single act, the prime act of God, which is all positive. Uh, therefore, she loves, she loves in God's divine unity. If she adores, if she blesses, no curses, no negativity. It is always inside the unity of God. So here's what Jesus wants. You want to enter the single act of God? Love, adore, bless. It's, it's, it's no more negativity. Uh, a lot of people swear and, and use God's name in vain. That's something that, you know, you apologize to the Lord immediately. You know, you don't say, you know, yelling out loud, but Lord Jesus, I am so sorry that this is being said against you, your holy name. I'm so sorry, this blasphemy that's going on. Lord, I want to repair this. I want to redo this in the holy divine will as if this and all words ever spoken were positive, were of blessing, were of adoration, were inside the divine unity of God. That it's Jesus is teaching us. It's not, these aren't just words to, oh, that was really nice. What's, got anything else for dinner? <laughs> I mean, it's like God is asking us, he, he's asking us to enter into his life one single act to love and to adore and to bless. When you, when you were in front of the Blessed Sacrament, it's not to complain. A lot of people go in there just to complain. Why is this happening to me? And Jesus tells Louisa, humiliation is necessary to bring about purification of the soul. And the best way to be purified is to be humiliated. So Jesus says, if you enter the single act of God, you begin to love with the love of the unity of God. You begin to adore in the triune God. You begin to bless in, in, in the triune God. You, you enter into the divine unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If we try to comprehend God, she does so within our divine unity. Now think about that last one. He wants us to comprehend God. It's just that's why he gave us the book of heaven. What we're beginning to understand how much God loves us. He says, this is what you do. You, you comprehend us within our divine unity. If she sees and does and feels nothing outside of us, it's everything inside our divine being. So what Jesus showed the, the saints was his holy humanity, the exterior of Jesus. And that's what we've been following for 2,000 years. Now with the divine will, she sees and does and feels nothing outside of God, but now what's inside of God, everything inside our divine being. This is the new divine way of holiness. How do we know what this is? Jesus says, read. What I've taught Louisa, I'm going to teach the whole world. If you want to know what the illumination of conscience is, read the book of heaven. You want to know what the illumination of conscience is? You want to get ready for the illumination of conscience? Are you, are you scared about the illumination of conscience? Start reading the book of heaven. Jesus, Jesus is showing us everything inside his divine being. The soul can say, I do not know, nor do I love or want anything but the divine will alone. I don't want to know anything that's going on in the news. Jesus says, Louisa, they're trying to destroy my church. Louisa, they're trying to kill humanity. What was next? What was Jesus' next words to Louisa? Let them. That's what they want. Let them do it. He says, you and I, Louisa, we're going to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Aren't you happy? This it's, it's happiness. Let them do what they want. He, he just says, evil has to exhaust itself. It hasn't exhausted itself yet. We're going to see some tough things, but the kingdom is coming. God has to give to everybody what they want. My understanding of the, of the three days of darkness is death comes to the earth. Three days of Jesus in the tomb, three days in the belly of the whale. It's basically death comes to the earth, and God says to death, take what's yours and leave. That's why you don't look at what's going outside. You don't want to look at what's going outside. 
take what's yours. He's going to save the devil and leave. My kingdom is coming. You've had your opportunity. You've had your hundred years. Leave. They said, after the three days of darkness, when that new day begins, he says, the survivors will be the little children in the holy divine will. Now, those are the words of Jesus to Louisa. I don't want to know, know anything. I don't want to love anything. I don't want anything but the divine will alone. That It's unity. Keep me enclosed inside the divine will. I want nothing, but I want God. Now, the greatest fortune, the grace and the most sublime will for the, for the creature and the greatest glory and honor for us trying God is to possess the human will. It's act inside our unity. This is why Our Lady teaches Louisa um, on the, in those, six, those six first days of the Virgin Mary in the kingdom, when you pray those first, I like to pray the first six, six days, there's little little paragraphs of, of right after Holy Communion. Uh, the greatest uh, fortune, the so most sublime for the creature, the greatest glory, the greatest for honor for us, God, is to possess the human will and act inside our divine unity. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's why I was created. That's why we were created. And do you know why? Because we, try on God, give love as much as we want, to be loved as much as we desire, and we can enrich the soul with grace, with sanctity, with beauty, so much as to feel enraptured by the very goods and the very beauty that we have fused in the soul, in the, the soul that wants to live in the divine will. Listen to what Jesus says. And do you know why it's the greatest honor for us, trying God, and it's greatest fortune and the great, greatest grace for the creature to do an act inside our divine will and the unity of this light? Because we can give divine love as much as we want. We can be divinely loved as much as we desire. And we can enrich the soul with grace, enrich the soul with sanctity, enrich the soul with beauty, so much as to be enraptured. This is, this is ecstasy for God by the very works and goods and beauty that we have breathed into the soul. This breath of God is very, very important. And he says, in some, we can interact with the creature. We can love the creature. We can trust the all to the nothing because she, this the soul, possesses something of our own. And she, the soul, will feel such power and such love as to be able to defend, to defend the all. We're in battle. God is giving us the weapons. To what? To defend God. We can repair and redo, as Jesus did on the cross, as Mary did on Calvary. This is what they're trying to teach us. We can possess something of God's own, and we will feel such power and such love to be able to defend God himself. And we try on God, listen to what he says. We try on God feel safe in the nothing because we have surrendered to it our weapons to keep us safe and defended. Our God loves us very, very much. He has... He has blessed us to live at this time. He has is, he is predestined us to live at this time to give us the power of God, the love of God, the strength of God in a way that the saints, if they could be envious, would be envious. The beauty, the goods, the holiness, the saintliness that God wanted for humanity is now ours in this great gift of the divine will. And he's given it to us. What a great God we have. May the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, and we pray that this prayer becomes God's command. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you.